Magandang hapon sa kanilang lahat. A pleasant afternoon to all of you who have made time to join us. Welcome to the third in the 2022 lecture series of the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo. Muscat is, as usual, delighted by your presence. We are extremely pleased about this afternoon's lecture. Our speaker today is simply extraordinary, and we are beyond delighted and honored that she accepted our invitation. Elena Rivera Mirano, PhD, is an award-winning author and researcher, an exemplary academic, a performing artist, a Prince Klaus laureate, the recipient of an Achievement Award in Humanities from the National Research Council of the Philippines, and an elder of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. And she will talk about one of the Filipinos' favorite musical forms, the kundiman but more about Dr. Mirano later when she is properly introduced before her talk. In the meantime, a brief introduction of us, especially for those who have just made our acquaintance. Permit me to tell you about the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo, MUSCA, a foundation engaged in museum development, collecting, studying, and safeguarding material culture and cultural education programs with Unilab as its main benefactor. I am Corazon Alvina. The Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo's mission and vision are about knowledge, ancestral and contemporary. Muscat is committed to rediscovering, recuperating, celebrating, and preserving Philippine inherited and transmitted kaalaman. Sharing knowledge is a good part of Muscat's work, providing opportunities through which the public can discover acknowledge, understand, and appreciate the many layers of Filipino kaalaman. Muscat's programs and projects are inspired by the remarkable features of Philippine tangible and intangible culture. A keen custodian of tangible culture, Muscat's online presentations and programs and publications with objects from the collection are conceptualized mindful of careful research and ethical curatorship, maintaining the integrity of objects within the context particular to the source culture. To ensure correct scholarship, it engages and collaborates with respected academics and acknowledged subject matter experts. There are processes that bring forth the most exquisite textile, the handsomest weapon, astonishing basketry, Muscat probes for the inspiration behind the creation of such wonderful objects. Muscat is sensitive to the physicality and materiality of the objects themselves to guide the study of processes and technology and shepherd the conservation strategy for the well-being of the collection. Muscat has also operationalized collections management guidelines for registration and conservation. The bonds between humans and the environment and the balance that must be maintained between them receive the utmost regard from Muscat. As do the aesthetic integrity and creative philosophy, the outstanding skills and the commitment of our artists, Muscat acknowledges the diwa, spiritual sense and essence in Kaalaman. The resolve of the Museo ng Kaalaman Katutubo is to encourage, and spirit, and invigorate pride, admiration, and affection for Kaalamang Katutubo, as indeed for and in all things Philippine. As promised, we will listen to a more proper introduction of Dr. Mirano. May I ask Muscat colleague Raymond Santiago to do that. Raymond. Thank you and good afternoon. Allow me to introduce our speaker. Elena Rivera Mirano is a professor emeritus of art studies at the UP Diliman. She served as chair of the Department of Art Studies and dean of the College of Arts and Letters. As a researcher in the traditional culture of the Southern Tagalog region, she authored several noteworthy publications. Subli, one Dance in Four Voices claimed the National Book Award in 1989 under the Art Book category. 
ang mga tradisyonal na musikang pantinig sa Lumang Bawan, Batangas, which was awarded the UP Gawad Chancellor for Best Book, Humanities Category in 1998. The Life and Works of Marcelo Adonai, also awarded the Alfonso Ongpin Award and the National Book Award, Art, category, Art Book Category in 2009. And of course, her latest work, Performance Notes, in 2018. In the domain of the performing arts, she was featured artist of the recording album, Kumintang, Awitin ng mga Tagalog na Tagabatangas, which was produced for the UP Diamond Jubilee. Kumintang, incidentally, is also a one-woman show developed for the launch of this album and was subsequently toured by the Cultural Center of the Philippines as part of its outreach program. Professor Mirano is also Director Emeritus of the Cherubim and Seraphim, the official children's choir of the UP Diliman. She served as a research director for the Philippine program at the 1998 Smithsonian Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C., and also held the same post as research director at the Batangas City Museum in 2009. In 2001, she was designated laureate of the prestigious Prince Claus Fund for Culture and Development of the Netherlands. In 2007, an Achievement Award in Humanities was conferred on her by the National Research Council of the Philippines. She is an elder of the Na- National City United Church of Christ in the Philippines and currently serves as the Director of Music. She is by far the best authority on our topic this afternoon, Awit, Komintang, at Kundiman. Hence, without further ado, allow me to turn over the virtual floor to Professor Lynette Mirano. We will entertain inquiries, comments, and clarifications at the end of Professor Mirano's lecture in our question and answer portion. Please do send your questions in the comment box at Facebook and we will raise them with our speaker. Professor Mirano. The Kundiman has often been referred to as the Philippine National Song. Moderate in tempo, full of emotion, the Kundiman expresses the aspirations of the Filipinos towards love and freedom. Arising at the turn of the 19th century, the Kundiman form is a product of the processes of assimilation and consolidation that were responses of conquered populations to the onslaught of the colonizing culture. Appearing to mimic the tonal system of the colonizer in music, it is nevertheless related to older indigenous forms that display traces of pre-colonial sound systems and their ideals. One such form is the kumintang, a song that is unfamiliar to the ordinary Filipino today which nonetheless was referred to in the 19th century as the Cancion Nacional de los Tagalos. My intent today is to shed light on the linkages between the two traditional Tagalog song repertoires to show their mutually deep historical roots. I will strive to prove that the processes that shape these forms were as a result of the encounter between one traditional culture and another that invaded and conquered it. It is important to understand that our musical forms have a history and are evidence of the persistence of ways of thinking and acting that come from a deep layer of culture that persists and resists change until today and that is leading us in directions we cannot predict because we refuse to recognize that the vocal and sound ideals of our pre-colonial past still survive in us and are a marker of our uniqueness in Southeast Asia today. 
I will begin by introducing to you and describing in some detail two important but little-known Tagalog traditional song, song forms. The first I will refer to as the awit an ancient set of forms that were recognized by the authors and compilers of the very first Tagalog vocabularies, dictionaries, and glossaries, such as Pedro de San Buenaventura in 1613, Domingo de los Santos in 1794, and Juan de Noceda and Pedro de San Lucar in 1860. At this point, I must clarify that for the old Tagalog aficionados, the term awit refers to a specific type of song and not all song in general. For example, the kundiman, danza, balitaw, and other repertoires that exhibit Western concepts of harmony do not belong to the category awit. Neither do old genres of vocal music that employ the concept of punto or skeletal melody such as the Lenten Passion, the Maytime Subli, the Huluna, and Uyayi, or lullabies. The last four have punto, verse forms, and performance styles specific to each form, and these cannot be sung outside of the proper time and context. E. Arsenio Manuel, writing in 1958, recognizes both the generic and the specific means meanings of the term awit. Awit is used as a generic term when it refers to all types and forms of music involving the human voice. But there is an older, narrower term referring to a more specific music genre that covers numerous styles and performance practices. The styles and practices of this archaic genre are bound together by the following characteristics. The first is the use of the plosa, the dodecasyllabic monorhyming quatrain. This refers to the verse form that employs 12 syllables to a line, 4 lines to a stanza, and a single rhyming syllable at the end of each line of the quatrain. Perhaps the most familiar example of plosa verse to Filipinos is Francisco Baltazar's Florante at Laura that is still required reading in our schools. The stanza, O pagsintang labis ng kapangyarihan, sampung magaamay iyong nasasaklaw. Pag ikaw ang nasok sa puso ni Numan, hahamakin lahat, masunod ka lamang. Is an example of the plaza verse form. Second, the themes and subject matter of each awit vary, depending on the performance context. There may be debates about religion or politics, courtship exchanges between young men and women, satirical verses against a corrupt or evil social order, long narratives and ballads about local heroes or current events, or celebratory songs at birthdays and weddings. The songs may be memorized, stories may be improvised on the spot, and jousts in song may be verbal displays of wit and mastery of talinghaga or figurative language. Some styles include dancing, accompanying instruments like the drum, bamboo tube drum, guitar, or fiddle, provide an emphatic sense of rhythm in what is an unpredictable triple meter with suggestions of syncopation, hemiola, sudden shifts of accent, and the occasional insertion of duple or quadruple meter. These accents are further emphasized by emphatic foot stamping by the instrumentalist. Rhythmic hand clapping by the onlooker sometimes creates a layering of rhythmic elements with a floating vocal line rising against the two heavily accented lines of clapping and foot stamping re respectively. The instrumental line may play a single sound cluster continuously 
or one or two of these clusters alternately repeating the figure again and again. I hesitate to use the term chord in this context because the clusters may or may not be framed as a typical Western triad consisting of a root, a third, and a fifth. In this sense, the clusters of sound serve to produce an ostinato, a continuous or repeating sequence that grounds the performance and allows the vocal melody to float above it. The vocal melody floats above the instrumental line. The tonality is unstable, sometimes resembling the minor mode. In the last two decades of the 20th century, I found myself doing fieldwork in the towns of southwestern Batangas. Here, I discovered a rich load of traditional song that was still being performed and enjoyed by ordinary village folk, long after most people thought these forms had died out. The awit, kumintang, and kundiman were part of the repertoire of many fine singers, dancers, and instrumentalists. Many of the recordings in this paper come from my field recordings of this period. Armed with these recordings and bolstered by the historical scores I will also show you presently, I was able to gain some insights into a history of music that has long disappeared from our view. The video that follows is an example of an awit sa cruz in the Batanga style as performed by Euphemia Caringal with Buenaventura Caringal on the drum. is an awit variant that, according to early scholars, emerged from the province of Batangas in the southwestern Tagalog region. The early chronicles sometimes call this province Kumintang, and it is most likely that the awit from this place, which included song and dance, was referred to as Kumintang or Kinumintang. Until today, there are dance gestures such as the flicking of the fingers and twirling of the wrists or talik ng kamay seen in the recorded field performances of Batanggenyo's Dancing the Awit. Here we see an awit sa cruz performed by Euphemia and Buenaventura Caringal on the drum. During my field research period from 1980 to 1989 in Batangas, my informants associated the term kumintang with a plucked guitar technique, resulting in a florid and melodious style of performance. The next two samples are examples of kumintang guitar as performed by Periano Caringal.
of Kumintang as dance song form first appears in historical scholarship in the Map of the Philippines by Pedro Murillo Velarde, dated 1734. The map proper is flanked by two panels of six detailed prints by the Tagalog printmaker Nicolas Cruz Bagay. In one of these, we find three figures, a male and female dancing and another male figure playing the guitar. Under the trio, we find the text Indios Bailando El Kumintang. In Estadismo de las Islas Filipinas o Mis Viajes por Este País, written between the years 1803 to 1805 and published in 1893, Fray Joaquin Martinez de Zuniga provides us with a description of the Kumintang and Kundiman. Two songs performed in his honor in the town of San Jose, Batangas on the 2nd and 3rd of January, 1800. Martinez describes both songs as musical exchanges between two women who danced as they sang. A second print, La Serenata del Cumintang, may be found in the magazine La Ilustración Filipino of 1892. Here, we see a group of men serenading a woman who looks down on them through a window of a bamboo house in the courtship practice called harana by the Tagalog. It is interesting to note that by the middle of the 20th century, the kumintang was largely unknown in Katagalugan outside of Batangas, and the kundiman was considered the appropriate repertoire for the, tra for the traditional harana. It appears that by this time, the latter form had taken over the traditional function of the kumintang. From 1842, in a work by Sinibaldo de Mas, until 1950, in another essay by Mercy Melchor, 13 authors provide us with bits and pieces of information about the two forms. In the 20th century, the kundiman was referred to 
as the new kumintang or the modern kumintang, perhaps due to their common use of the plosa and the fact that both were performed interchangeably in traditional haranas or weddings. The three scores found in various historical sources provide us with more valuable information about the kumintang form. Allow me to play four more samples of music from the late 19th century. Two of them are kumintangs, while two are examples of a newer form called the kundiman. interesting features shared by these two forms. First, both are built on the plosa form. Both are also in moderate triple meter. Finally, they are used in identical social contexts and serve the same functions in these contexts. But there are also very significant differences between the two forms. The kumintang has a distinctive punto. The tonality is unstable or at the very least unfamiliar to the ear trained in Western tonality. The kundiman follows clear European 18th and 19th century tonal structures and may modulate from the minor to the major key. 
In the 19th century Kundiman examples, the tonality does not change. But in those from the 20th century, there is an A section, generally in the minor, while the B section is in the parallel or relative major. There are examples of 20th century Kundimans with a three-part structure. In these cases, the A section is in the minor, the C section is in the major, while the B section is generally a transition section, sometimes featuring modulation. While the melodic organization of the kumintang is anchored in the punto, a loose melodic skeleton filled out and ornamented by the singer that floats over a more rhythmic, albeit irregularly metered ostinato bass, controlled by the instrumentalist, the kundiman follows the melodic and harmonic structure of the 18th and 19th century European period form, where a melodic unit consists of two four-measure phrases, antecedent and consequent, generally following the harmonic progression 1-4-5-1 or 1-5-1. One, one. An analysis of the imagery found in the text of the three types of song reveals a change in the character and sensibility of the figurative language. The early Awit samples, as well as those encountered by this author in fieldwork, feature the traditional folk talinghaga, earthy, grounded, and rooted in everyday experience. The talinghaga of the 19th century Kubintang and Kundiman may include exotic images and unfamiliar references from foreign cultures, images such as signos at planetas or sentimental, romantic, cosmopolitan uh, images showing the poet's familiarity with European culture. 20th century Kundiman lyrics tend to be emotional, exaggerated, melodramatic, and grandiose in the quality of talinghaga. Note the phrases, Luha ng buhay ko, and hanggang sa hukay, magkasama ikaw at ako. At the end of this paper, what can be gleaned from these bits and pieces of information gathered from many sources over the span of three centuries? What can we piece together from these fragments? We begin to see the relationship of these three forms, beginning with the Awit, a song form that predated the arrival of the first Spanish chroniclers that described it as early as the 17th century. A regional style and technique of the Awit that developed around the area known as Kumintang gained so much prominence over the Tagalog region by the late 18th century that it became known as the Chant Nacional or Canto Nacional de los Tagalos. This form retreated in the last decades of the 19th century but somehow survived in its original habitat until the last decades of the 20th century in the hill towns of southwest Batangas. It was supplanted in the 20th century by another 19th century form, the Kundiman, which shared some formal characteristics with the older Kumintang and took its place in many social situations. The music of the Kundiman, however, was aligned to the style and aesthetic of 19th century Europe and represented the mastery of this style by the local population. In conclusion, we can say that the Kundiman is the result of a long historical process of what the late Bienvenido Lumbera has noted as the assimilation of a foreign culture of a colonial master and its synthesis into the culture of the colonized. In the movement from Awit to Kumintang to Kundiman, therefore, we find embedded a valuable history of change in a Philippine setting. The hint of conflict, the effect of struggle, the attempt to integrate, and above all, the slow formal change from one aesthetic to another. Thank you. Thank you, the Dr. Mirano, uh, for a most informative and very interesting uh, talk this afternoon. Um, if you will allow, uh, 
we would like to open the floor for questions from our viewers. Uh, currently, uh, we're still waiting on some questions. Uh, but um, allow me to uh, broach a few uh, from some of my own. Uh, okay, uh, with your indulgence, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, thanks to your documentation of... Um, uh, the the songs uh, from from uh, uh, the Batangas area, uh, we have been able to ascertain uh, both the forms and the rich history behind the forms uh, of the of uh, the music. I, I am just curious, ma'am, uh, is, is the, uh, the uh, are there similar patterns in similar areas, say within the region of the Calabar zone? or the Mimaropa, which are predominantly Tagalog. Uh, yes. Have you encountered some? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, my uh, my research took me to many different areas. no. And uh, syempre, when you're writing your dissertation, you have to go through everything, no? all the material that has been previously published. So that's why I can even cite E. Arsenio Manuel, who worked in Quezon. Yes. And then I also have an example of Carol Carolina uh, uh, Paula Malay, no, who worked yes. in Bulacan. So there is a very good example there of Awit from Bulacan. Uh, it, it, it actually has been preserved. I don't know where it is now, but when we found the tape, no, it was disintegrating already, but we were able to, to save a copy. If I remember correctly, I still have a copy, but I love to look it up. <laughs> um, but that's very valuable because that was done in the 1950s. So you have, and then of course, there are many examples in the Center for Ethnomusicology in UP Diliman, where they did a very extensive survey of um, music all over the Philippines. So you have samples of awit, you have all kinds of things, no? And, and all these forms, ma'am, uh, have a rich history behind them. Uh, the transition from one form to the other. Well, yes, you can do it. If you, if you have the materials, you can reconstruct it because these are musical examples. Eh? So in other words, uh, you can listen to them and see, okay, uh, in 1960, the awit was done like this. And then in 1980, it was like mm -hmm. this. And then in 2000, it was like this. No, And then you go back especially to that period in the late 19th century in in the Philippines when they were when they were doing a lot of collecting but yes. they would come here and collect mga, uh, mga yes. animal yes. specimens and plants but yes. it's not only animal and plant specimens because those examples the one from Novara for example that came from an archaeological uh, it was a boat called the Novara and it came from one country let me see I'll, I'll let me just check because uh, the Novara, yes, it's an, it was an Austrian ship. And it went around the world in the years 1857 to 59. And they collected these samples. They had kumintangs and kundimans. So the ones that you heard are courtesy of that anthropological um, exploration. And they were transcribed using... Um Western documentation techniques. Yes, yes. Uh, one of them, yung the Mala, which was the first one and of those four samples, uh, that was collected. Uh, there must have been a musician in the crew. But when they went home to France, um, they contacted a musician whose name was, uh, let me see, how, what was the name? Henry Cohen. He's well known as a philatelist and at saka isang, <laughs> yeah, he collected stamps. Yes, yes. <laughs> but he was also a musician. No? <laughs> and so what he did was he took that original transcript, transcription, which is lost. No? And then he put it on paper and then he made his own accompaniment on piano. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, um, si Epifanio de Los Santos makes a comment on this. And if you will, if if your ears, if you are a musician, no, I'm sure that are, if there are musicians in this audience, I'm sure they will hear that hmm, uh, this is not like the others that I listened to, no, the field one and then the one of Waltz in Merino. Because hmm. it modulates, eh? it, has, it has about a few measures that modulate sila. Mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't happen. No? 
So, sabi ni Epifanio de los Santos, who, by the way, was a very fine musician. Huh? He was a guitarist. And he said, oh no, that's not authentic. Uh, siguro, this Cohen just added it because, you know, it was so boring yeah. because uh-huh. hindi nagpapalit ang... <laughs> ang, ang ano. So, um, you actually have the commentary of uh, Epifanio de los Santos, de los Santos on that sample. It's found in another text. But then, you know, you have to kalkal all these ancient books na they're so rare. Uh, but luckily, they exist, no? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Um, ma'am, we have another question from a listener this time. Uh, yes. Did 20th century kundiman composers retain in their music any of the musical traits that evolved through Awit or from Awit, Komintang kundiman, like Abilardo or Santiago? Yes, yes, okay. Uh, I did not include uh, that golden age of kundiman Uh, because I really wanted to focus on the uh, 17th to 19th century. Sabi ko nga, kay, uh, kay Cora Alvina, if you want one on the 20th century kundiman, I can write you one, but not that's not for today. <laughs> okay. So, but, but the 20th century kundiman, especially those in that golden age, were familiar. Mm-hmm. Kasi um, I can think of people like Abelardo, who wrote a kumintang, by the way. Mutya ng Pasig is not a kundiman. It's, it's a kumintang. A kundiman. Yeah. Ah, okay. And then if you look at the form of yung kumintang niya, of course, it, does, it sounds like a Western, you know, opera piece. However, you will find that his, yung kanyang, the shape of his melody is similar. There are some similarities to the, the song of that lady who sang and danced. That was a, Uh, that was an awit melody and then it comes from kumintang so it is the form of kumintang actually and you will notice that you start very low and then you stay there in a lower range and all of a sudden she jumps to a higher range you know, huh? and then you'll also find that in that gentleman that's singing to the kumintang guitar no? he will sing at a very even you know, beginning and then he jumps up no? that happens also in the in the mutya ng Pasig. So, itong si Abelardo was aware. Tagabulakan hmm. si, ano eh, si Abelardo and Santiago also. So, these older musicians, the one that were working in the early decades, you know, pre, pre-war, they were very familiar because it still existed. They, I mean, you know, if, when they went over to the province and uh, si, ano, si Abelardo is, was a school teacher from from somewhere in Bulacan. I cannot remember the, the particular town. He would have heard this. He would have heard this. Because if you go home to Batangas, I don't know if they still do it. Ano? But mm-hmm. when I was doing my field work, a lot of them still could sing, uh, the older people. And then there were a few young people that could do it. Ngayon, those young people are already in their 60s, 50s and 60s. So I don't know if na passed down to the young. I doubt if it passed down to the younger ones. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, a follow-through question from our listener. Uh, yeah. What do you mean when you refer to modulation? Okay. Uh, if uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I used a lot of technical language, but I don't know really how to use uh, how to describe the similarities and differences without using this. Modulation is really something that is very European in character, no? And uh, it has come down even to us, you know. Um, you see, the the there are two two big scales, two big modalities in uh, in eighteenth, um, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, and the part of the twentieth century music, which are familiar to us. We use that. That's that's the one we know. So there are there's the major mode and the minor mode, you know. And then in Western Nano, you have different uh, scales. So, for example, if you're in the major mode, you can have a C major, D major, E major, F major. All of the, you that uh, play guitar chords, you know that. Eh? And then when you're using kunyari, the key of C major, no? what are the chords you play if your song is in C major? It's C, F, G7, right? No? And if you're in uh, the key of G major, you use G, C major, D7. No? Those are the chords that you will use together. So that's one that's one um, that's one scale. Ngayon, modulation allows you to move that scale to different points. 
So you can move, for example, from C major to C minor, or from C major to G major, or from C major to F major. Yan ang yung, yung movement, yung, yung, it's like you're in C major, for example. Nasa C major ka, and then you want to go to G major, nandito ka, no? So ngayon, may cambio yan. Kailangan may cambio. Yung okay. cambio na yon is called the modulation. There is a chord that you use to, to cambio from one to another. Yan ang tinatawag nilang modulation. You don't find it in the early examples. The ones that we heard in the 19th century don't have modulation. But in the 20th century, there's a lot of that already. Which means you mga musicians natin, especially... Yes. Yeah. What is the significance of this modulation? Yes, uh, nag-aaral na yung mga yan. So that, those musicians, you know, they went to university. Some of them trained in the church, no? And, and uh, so they know what is a chord. They know the theory of music. And so they can, you know, they can play in a major scale. Yeah. And, and they say, okay, you play the C major scale or, or you play your scale in uh, F major or you play in F minor. What's the difference? All these old musicos, they, they play in bands, they play in orchestras, etc. They could do that already. And this is where you get your early musicians. People like Marcelo Adonai, Jose Canseco, all these people that uh, were writing around the turn of the 20th century. And so yung mga compositions nila, Abelardo was working in, in the 1920s already. He was already a parang professional musician as she those guys could really work in that system. They had mastered, they had mastered the Western uh, harmonic system already. Whereas in the early ones, you have simple lang, no? Simple lang yung melodies nila, hindi sila nag-move. So you can see that uh, something has happened to the musicians, yes. especially from the kumintang, but you actually are not using the Western system at all. You're mm -hmm. using something else, No? Uh, it's quite a beautiful system, no? If, if we have time, I don't. I'm afraid we don't have that kind of time, but um, it works quite differently. So, nag shift from that one to the kundiman, which has similarity. So you use the same text, no? And then even the kundiman, you know, in performance, yung mga kundimans na yan, mm. they are very unstable also in tonality and rhythm as well. So they don't go yung one, two, three, one, two, three, ganun. Ha? Hindi ganun. Which is what you would have in Western music. Pero sa atin, it would be shifting. Sometimes, you know, nag-three, four sila, bigla na lang nagdadalo. Bakit ang dalawa? Sometimes they would have three and a half. No? And, and uh, they knew how to do this. So it's a quite a different rhythmic system. Also very different modal and, system. And this is indicative mom of uh, the character of the say the composer to actually develop new sound yes yes, ba yun, ma ah, yes. Okay, okay. 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 so from from the old technique uh, uh, they establish new ones uh, new, new ones, ones are forms uh, yes. form. okay okay thank you ma'am um, ma we have a question from miss marian uh, she's That's listening nice. marian pastor roses good afternoon ma'am um, hi, Lynette and Raymond. <laughs> Love from Museo Puntong uh, Batangas, uh, Batangan, Puntong Batangan, where I am. Uh, uh, her question is, please elaborate on the word punto. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the uh, old people use the term punto a lot for many things. Like when they talk about the, uh, uh, the forms, they will say, ang pasyon namin dito sa Sa bawan, iba ang punto sa puntong taal. Or mm. yung kapag nag-aawitan, uh, ang punto ng sinilangan ay iba na sa puntong uh, uh, kinanluran o mm. kinumintang. No? Now, mm. when you use the word punto, the definition ano, is that it is a skeletal melody. Okay? What does that mean? It means kasi this is an improvised form. Yes. No? Every person fills out that skeleton differently. So, okay. for example, you have a certain uh, direction of the melody, you know? mm -hmm. For example, it just stays here like this. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly towards the end, gaganyan, tapos bababa. Mm -hmm. That is a punto. 
Okay. No? But there are certain points that you're looking for and in between you can do you, you can have your own ornamentation. And so at first, no, if you're not used to it, parang each one is just doing his own thing, but it's not. There is a rule there. There's a skeleton upon which you build a melody. And that's what they call the pudito. Okay. No? So for example, I can, I can actually demonstrate. So if you're doing a, a huluna, you can sing. You can do it that way. No? But with using the same punto, you can do... Which is a very different thing, but it has the same punto. And it's recognizable because there is that skeleton there. Yes, and that recognition... Uh... Oh, it, it, ano, that recognition posits a cer- certain identity for a group of people uh, from, from a region? From, Sometimes po it's regional. It's regional. Sometimes it's not necessarily like, you know, the, the forms have punto. Like, so you have a puntong huluna, you have a puntong pasyon, you have a puntong awit, ano. So yes. they can be different, no? But then you can also say, if you're doing uh, an awit, you can do a uh, awit na sinturisan. Sinturis is a sinturisan is a is a barrio, a barangay, a village in the hills of Bawan. Or you can do puntong taal, no? Or you can do a puntong sidan roque, or a puntong kavitegan, or a puntong pinagbilaw. Pinagbilaw is in Quezon. So. Uh, so there will be people kasi mga kuminsan kapag nag-aawitan bands of people come together like for example Kinasal may Kinasal mm-hmm. one group is from Bawan one group is from uh, let's say Baranga City yes. tropa yan dadating eh, di ba? <laughs> and many of them sing and dance yes, uh-huh. so when they perform no, y- you will expect those from Bawan to have their own style and uh, the punto yes. and then um, sabi nga nila okay when you're doing the sublian, there's a, there is a, ano na, uh, tinatawag nilang batang genya where the women are going. <laughs> that is the style ng batang genya, no? But uh, then you have, you have also these people na ganito kung magano. <laughs> Ang ganda, ganda. And it's so refined, you know, you won't notice it right away. But you can tell where a person is from by the way she performs or the way he, he has a punto. So you can see those are identifiers also. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, another question okay. from Glenda <coughs> Delica Garcia. Is Princesa ng Kumintang uh, a kundiman or as kundiman? Princesa ng Kumintang. Okay. Yes. It is a danza. Danza. Okay. Ganito. Let me explain kundiman this way. Ano? In the 20th century, um, people distinguish the kumintang repertoire from the kundiman repertoire. And I think something happened because there is really a formal kundiman. It's yeah. always in 3-4, no? It's moderate, no? And then um, there are distinct, mga two sections usually, yan, whether they modulate or they change in key is, is, uh, no, is uh, it varies sa history, no? But, um, all the songs that were in that Western tradition are sometimes called under the rubric kundiman when they're not. There is the balitao, which is also in triple time, but it's faster. Yung tan, tararan, tan, 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 tararan, that's balitao, no? Kundiman is not like that. Kundiman is always pam, 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 pam. It's slower, no? And then you have the danza. The danza is always in two. So tam, pam, pam, pam. Pam, pam, pam. A princess ng kumintang is danza. So it's... Mm, yes, I, I remember that. Ng kumintang. Okay? So, yeah. Okay, okay. 
Question answered. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Another question, ma'am. From Rose May Kilario. Good afternoon, Dr. Mirano. My question is, have you discovered younger artists who, who still continue and make kumintang? Well, my field work was from 1980 to about the end of the 19th, uh, 20th century. No? Uh, there were still some young people doing the kumintang at that time. They're much older now. Uh, once in a while, uh, I, haven't, I haven't gone back to the field. No? Um, not, at least not in, no, not in Batangas. No? Mm -hmm. uh, but when we were doing the Museo ng Batangas, we still would find, but older ones lang, the young ones, very few. Very, I think that would be rare. Very rare. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, from, from um, Michi Martinez, okay. uh, are the archaic awit and kumintang only with Tagalog texts? Is it possible to have some uh, of the same form from other islands in Mimaropa, but whose language is, uh, say, of the Panay Islands? Uh, you have music from the Visayas. I, in fact, Wals Imerino, eh. Wals Imerino has a balitao um, and other things. So I think kung gusto, eh, if you want to do the research, because it's really very time-consuming, no? And um, when I was doing my research, nakatutok talaga ako. So usually, ang nakakadiscovery niyan, yung mga sumusulat ng dissertation, <laughs> yung mga, you know, people working specifically for on a particular project na have the time and the energy to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, there are. Of course, people have been collecting. Priscilla Magdamo, for example, has the five-volume songs from Visayas. And then one of my students has just come out with a bunch of songs from Leyte. See, my, the book is somewhere here. So you have, you have uh, a lot, no? I, I know the one from Leyte. Uh, and, and, and there are many. Actually, okay. very rich tayo. Okay. Um, ano, um, my own question naman, uh, uh, para ilipat ka lang ma'am yung attention. My, my earliest uh, encounters with Kundiman uh, have been with uh, the soundtracks of movies. Yes. Yun. Um, I, I'm afraid uh, being confined to Metro Manila, with little uh, opportunities to travel to the countryside. Um, ano ma'am, uh, my, my, my love for Kundiman was largely engendered by, by uh, watching the old movies yes. uh, and having the lead artists perform. The, ano. um, I, I just noticed ma'am na uh, the, your, your description of say the 20th century or the latter types of Kundiman uh, medyo mas exaggerated sila mas uh, could it be dahil um, uh, uh, as a way to popularize the Kundiman uh, Kundiman met the movies uh, mm, no hindi. I think it's, it's earlier um, if you a, a very useful ano, a very useful uh, piece of writing is uh, Bienvenido uh, Lumbera's Lumbera. Poetry because he talks about yung Yung the change in the language from from uh, from folk poetry all the way until the 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 turn of the century, you know? yeah. And then yung yung ano kasi yung mga poets became yung folk poets kasi they write about their experience, you know. Yeah. Uh, the one that experience that I uh, the, the 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 para the the stanza that I the stanzas that I gave from the folk uh, tradition. Makikita mo yung uh, 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 I will not pay any attention to you if you try to talk to me and you try to press this suit. I'm gonna step on you. That's what she says, no? Okay. Lulu saking kita. That's a very very strong image, yes, no? But it's really okay. something, no? Uh, and they're they're jousting. Actually, naglulukohan sila jan. Mm. Nagliligawan sila eh. Pero uh, yun nga. Uh, and you know that kind of thing would happen in the field. Uh, one of my informants told me about um, he went to Mindoro daw and then nagkaroon ng kasalan so nag nag uh, nag uh, nag jousting sila ng this girl ano and when it was over she she went home and she got her clothes and she was going to join him 
na he was go- she was gonna go off to Batangas with him and and he said I just got married <laughs> he was newly married at the time so of course matanda na siya when he we were laughing about it but ganon ang setting talagang it was live no mm-hmm. so ganyan uh, but then you know when you when you went into when you go into things like Florante at Laura Yes. It's already mga high flow na yung vocabulary, medyo may courtly, courtly traditions na from the West, that you know, taga Albania sila, etc. And you know, they're coming from these uh, these kingdoms and everything. So the the language changes and even the image of the self. And then towards the ano doon sa propaganda period syempre no high romantic yang mga yan they were in Europe and then they were reading Werther and all of this romantic literature so yung mga hanggang sa hukay magkasama at ikaw at ako mm-hmm. yung ilaglag mo ang panyo mong may pabango yeah. papahiran ko ang luha ng puso ko i mean it's very sentimental already no so mm-hmm. uh, there was a certain um, There's a certain um, what do you call it? Uh, a certain class, I suppose. It's a certain annoy. There's a certain knowledge of certain kinds of literature, certain kinds of images, and so makikita mo nagbabago din yung consciousness ng mga tao. Ano ba yung familiar sila? So the language changes from that very earthy to the to the very romantic, yung yung parang parang mga kingdoms and princesa and etc. And then finally, to yung yung that very overblown uh, romantic kind of uh, language that you find when it was uh, sa sa England doon, papakamatay si ano si Child Harold etc. Gany, ganyan yung change in the language so you can see. But this is over the centuries, no? So it took a long time. And, and this is indicative, ma'am, of a wider exposure to, say, literature from other countries. Perhaps, uh, yeah, perhaps. Uh, okay, okay. And, and, and this is, but would you would you treat this as a way or uh, a means by which the local artist wanted to integrate to a greater, ano, to a greater uh, world? Definitely, definitely. Parang gusto nila talaga maging cosmopolitan. Okay. And especially okay. if you're with the propaganda movement, you want okay. to prove yourself to those people in Europe, no? Okay. okay. Now, I can write like this. Okay. I can write this kind of music, no? Mm-hmm. In fact, um, I there was this concert that we had for an international audience on Kundiman many decades ago. And uh, we had a, an evening of classic Kundiman from the early 20th century, you know? And so we had guests from all over the place. And then so there were these guys that were sitting there and then they told me, you know, you have your own operatic music pala. I, uh, I thought about that and I thought, yeah, the Kundiman is an art song. Mm. It could land in, uh, in some European uh, concert hall mm. with no problem. No? And, and, and would you say that this is a conscious effort? I think so. Pinag-isipan talaga dahil... Pinag-isipan niya. No? Okay. Definitely. <laughs> oh, because Molina was talking about that already. Eh. Okay. We have to make a national music. Okay. Ma'am, another question uh, from uh, another listener. Uh, did you say that the awit is a pre-colonial form? Uh, was it conceivably oral music only? Uh, or... Uh, may uh, may may saliw na katutubong instrumento or melody or both meron namang saliw yun talaga eh ang, aw- ang, be- ang awit is sung always with an instrumental accompaniment it can be a drum that's why I included the example of the drum yes earlier it can no? be a guitar it can be a bamboo node na parang pinupukpuk lang nila no because some, that's the uh, bamboo slit drum or something like that or it can be a fiddle okay, okay. fiddle na folk fiddle no so may saliw talaga yan um, but it is in the oral tradition syempre in the beginning we don't have a music notation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we don't have a music notation okay. ma'am curious din ako another question regarding the documentation of the early uh, music with say, pre-colonial mm-hmm. attributes, they're largely from foreign sources. Uh, people who have come from abroad and uh, took the time to document 
uh, these early forms. That's why we have okay. them. Okay. Uh, you know, the earliest documentation of music is the Mala, which is 18, ano ba date yun? 1842 ba yun? Sinabi ko, I'm, I'm so bad at dates. But here, let me just look at my notes. Huh? Uh, the first score is 1846, ano? and that is the Kumintang, Kumintang Dala Conquista. No? Um, this was a great period for uh, ethnographic collection. Okay. Don't forget, everybody did ethnographic yeah. collection. Uh-huh. Si Rizal was involved in yeah. exchanging data, etc. People were interested in doing work on their colonies. And that's why you have things like Illustration Filipino, And uh, what is the name of this guy? Um, what is the name of this Spanish you know, journalist? I'm sorry, I cannot remember right now. But anyway, uh, he did studies. He did little ethnographic studies. Like, you know, he was based in Manila. But then he would go out to Bulacan and he would write about this Bulacania that he saw and what she looks like. And he would have a sketch, you know. This is the great period of ethnographic Um, the beginnings of ethnographic research. And that is why we already have specimens in the publication. Okay. So it's a Western, I mean, basically yeah. it starts with the Europeans, no? The documentation. Then, oh, but then by, you know, by the turn of the century, uh, see Epifanio de los Santos had already transcribed the awit of a boatman on the passage singing the Florante at Laura. So those two examples are very valuable because it's one is Kaiselia and then the other one is yung opang sintang labis ng kapangyarihan. And he he uh, transcribed the melody. And he has very intelligent comments. You can tell that he's an intelligent musician. Um, um wala na pong nagtatanong. <laughs> I would like at this point to thank you uh, for answering the questions from our uh, listeners to our viewers. Uh, I would like to ask you though, uh, any final comments or any final words for our listeners uh, at this point? Mm, you know, doing cultural work, sometimes you ask yourself, ano, Um, shouldn't we be doing other kinds of you know, political work, etc., etc.? But you know, the I think for me the value of doing this kind of work is the fact that we have to know ourselves. And how do we know ourselves unless we know not only the history in words, but also the history in other forms of sensibility? And you know, we are a musical people. Yes. yes uh, Music is something you cannot remove from us. Mm-hmm. No? no matter what you do, yeah. you will find a way to make music. So, yeah. so parang uh, kailangan i-document yan eh. Para makita natin yung range ng ating capacity as a people. Mm-hmm. Especially in times where it's so dangerous to do other kinds of uh, work. In times of ano, yung... yung In different forms of history, we have different kinds of responses to all kinds of historical factors. But we always have a response in music. In music. Yes, there has been an explosion of music in the past six months, I think. Yes. That's unbelievable. Talaga. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and and uh, would, would you like to invite uh, young people... Uh, <laughs> to do a similar undertaking as you have done yourself. Uh, of course. Of course. Uh, it's very satisfying work. Um, yung generation namin kasi, I think, it was a generation in which we found, kasi kami yung generation ng, ano eh, ng uh, first quarter storm. I graduated in 1971 from Diliman. And during that time, it was really... a period of a lot of ferment. And so, ang ano namin, we have to go out there and see what is there in the country. And so, uh, we are a whole generation. No? We, we did research. We got arrested. We got tortured. We got, you know, we, <laughs> we joined the government. We thought all over the place, you know, and we're still here. Mm-hmm. We're still here. So, because 
we really went out there and listened to our teachers like si Bienvenido Lumbera, si e. Arsenio Manuel, all of these, Jose Maceda, etc. Because we listened to them, there is now a body of work mm. of the period mm-hmm. that we can now compare. So mm-hmm. we can compare this material that we collected, we put in books, we wrote about, etc. And uh, it can be built on. But the building has to happen regularly. We cannot just rely on one generation's work. It has to be the building up of many generations. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, very heartwarming message. Very inspiring message. Okay. Uh, now I would like to turn over the floor to Ms. Cora. Uh, ma'am? Thank you, uh, Raymond. And thank you, uh, Lynette for your enlightening explanation of the Awit, Kumintang, and Kundima. Malalim ang musical heritage natin talaga. Sana higit na marami ang makapakinig o makapanood at magsaliksik ng mga ito. A couple of generations, I think, are not familiar with these. And I will take you up, by the way, on your writing and talking about the 20th century Kundima, Sidika, invitahin kita uli, and the patriotic sentiments said to be contained by a couple of them. May is Heritage Month here in the Philippines. Music indeed is one of the pillars of Philippine and Dajibol heritage, sabi nga ni Dr. Mirano, especially dear to the Filipino, who make music using all manner of musical instruments and our voices. We have a song for every occasion, di ba? Once a foreigner asked me, when or at what age are Filipinos taught to sing? When indeed? Ordinary Filipinos like us are not really taught to sing, are we? We simply sing in church, in karaoke bars, in the bathroom, at the sight of a microphone. Anyway, to our participants and followers, friends, we hope to see you next month. Thank you for spending a bit of Heritage Month with us. We shift from music to textile in June as we look forward to another lively presentation by Dr. Cherubin Kizo. Meanwhile, we will appreciate your feedback. Do let us know what else you would like our subject matter experts to explore and share with you. We invite you to continue to be our partners in celebrating Philippine culture. Please go to our Facebook page for announcements and do like us. We are also on Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. Maraming salamat muli. Magandang hapon po sa kanilang lahat. Hanggang sa muling pagsasama-sama, laging ingat po.